Okay. Welcome everybody. Welcome to London. If you're a tourist, welcome to this beautiful May day. Very sunny, very bright, very warm. After a cold winter, hopefully we're in for a lovely warm summer. Summer. What I want to talk about today is the reality beyond the superficial. Everyone functions and has a sense or a perception of what reality actually is. And the perception of reality is based on what they can see with their eyes, the superficial external world. But is there a deeper reality to life, an internal reality to who you are deep within your being? Is there a real you that goes beyond the superficial? Is there a you that is whole, is complete, and is full of love? I want to say there is a real you who is full of love, full of unconditional love, full of divine love, a pure essence to you that exists. And this you is whole, complete. And when you discover this aspect of yourself, what happens is you find yourself living in full satisfaction because that's basically what everyone wants. Everyone wants to find satisfaction. They want to be happy. They want to be full and they want to live a complete and full life. But the reality is this world has got a broken heart. People are walking in a sense of brokenness, not just as individuals, but as nations and as a whole globe. People have a sense of brokenness, a sense of lack, that they want to fulfill. So they go after all sorts of different things to fulfill this sense of lack within them. For example, they go after things like religion. So that's why we have all these various arguments about religion. Christians and Muslims all arguing about who's right and who's wrong. There's no point in arguing about who's right and who's wrong because there's a, there is a deeper aspect to you that is that you need to discover and you won't discover that by having an argument. You need to go deep within yourself and be truthful and connect with the real you. And when you connect with the real you, you find true peace. You find true life. But like I said a moment ago, this world has experienced a brokenness within itself. It has a broken heart, a, a sense of lack. So therefore, it tries to fulfill that lack. And the result is, people look to the outward world, the superficial, to try and fulfill this sense of lack. And the result is conflict and war and disagreement because they're not finding the solution to what they really know innately within themselves. You will never find what you're looking for by having an argument with a Muslim. You will never find what you're looking for by having an argument with a Christian or arguing about any sort of politics. The reality is we're all made of the same substance. We're all created in divine love. But what the problem is, somehow in the past, we separated ourselves in our minds from this sense of love. And when we separated from this divine love, what happened was, we started to experience this lack and confusion and a need for fulfillment. Therefore, the song that Mick Jagger sang all those years ago, I can't find no satisfaction, but I try, and I try, and I try, but I can't find no satisfaction. But what I want to tell you is I have found that satisfaction, but I didn't find it in the outward world. I found it by experiencing pure divine love. Now, pure divine love exists throughout the whole universe. It's just beyond the fabric of what we can see. But in order to connect with this pure divine love, which we all know internally exists, we need to be honest. We need to be honest about our true condition. We need to recognize we will never find the fulfillment we need by trying to grasp at external things. Materialism will never make you happy. Having all the money in the world will never truly make you happy. Joining one of these religious groups, it will just confuse you and leave you with an even greater sense of lack. What we need to do is connect with that deep inner self, that true you. Everyone has a true you. Everyone has a true self. So are you living out of the conditioned self 
the self that has been imposed by others, where other people have told you who you are and therefore you believe this idea that other people told you? Or have you discovered your true self, which, is, which, which has always been within you, which has always been you, and which is far, far more powerful than the conditioned self that has been sub we've been subjected to? The media tells us this is who you are. Religion tells you this is who you are. You're a sinner. You're bad. You're going to go to hell if you don't believe as we believe. The media says you need to conform to this idea of culture and take on this way of thinking and then you'll be happy. This is how advertisers operate by appealing to your sense of need. Pardon? Yes, my shirt, yes. Colourful. But anyway, the media, <laughs> the media appeals <laughs> to your deepest, to your basic needs of what you really need in life. And what it's trying to do is stimulate you to buy its product. So what motivates the media and advertising is basically greed. So you're having an idea of who you are imposed on you. But the key thing is to go beyond the idea or the external idea that is opposed on you in terms of yourself and discover the real you, your real self, your deep inner being. Everyone has an inner self, a true self that isn't conditioned. Let me tell you, you are not a pathetic, fearful, broken person. You are a loved person. Every single person on this planet is individually and completely loved by a divine creator who doesn't judge them according to their actions or their faults. You're loved completely unconditionally. And when you discover this love, you discover peace and you discover, you discover satisfaction and you discover who you really are because that's the real issue. Who are we? Have you discovered who you are? The reality is we're all born with a sense of dysfunction in this world, with a sense of being disconnected. But how do you reconnect with who you really are? That's what's really needed. We need to reconnect with our true selves. And the way to reconnect with your true self is to have an experience, have a realization of pure, unconditional love. And this pure, unconditional love exists everywhere. It's just beyond the veneer of what we can see. The problem is, what we can see with our eyes is lying to us. It's telling us, this is where you'll find that peace. No, you need to look beyond what you can see. You need to look beyond the superficial and look to the depth and substance of being. Being, personality, inner being, you have a true being, a true inner self that is not corrupt, that is not broken, that is wonderful. You are a wonderful person in reality. You are an amazing person in reality. You are a brilliant person in reality. That's what you need to discover. Not this lie that the media tells you you're inadequate because you don't look this way or you don't look that way. You're amazing. You're wonderful. And what you need to do is discover your true self, your true quintessential self, the true essence of you. And there is a true essence of you. You have always been with you. You, you exist within yourself and you never leave yourself. You've never been separated from your true you. You just need someone to help you to become aware of it again. Because the lie of society has oppressed us, the lies that exist in this world, has oppressed our consciousness to the reality of who we are. Therefore, we, 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 we've learned to live out of a faulty consciousness, a consciousness that believes itself to be a failure, a consciousness that believes itself to be guilty, that believes itself to be no good. To believes itself, that believes itself to unable to succeed in life. But the reality is you are full of amazing potential. You're full of this quintessential essence of life. And the reality of Jesus, Jesus isn't about having a religious argument. All these arguments here, it's nothing to do with that. Jesus is about discovering who you really are and what life is really about. Resurrection life beyond death. That's why Jesus overcame death the power of resurrection and you can your true self is beyond death and is in the power of resurrection right now what needs to happen is just a simple unveiling just a simple pulling aside of the curtain of your mind in order that you can discover this reality and have peace and when you discover this peace 
when you discover this reality, you will be an extremely ha bye bye. <laughs> you will be an extremely happy person. That's what we're all looking for: happiness, peace, and satisfaction. But are you going to get it in the latest car or the latest digital technology or the latest relationship? These things. There's nothing wrong with having stuff, but we need to connect with our true selves. We need to connect with that thing that is within us, pure, on pure, unconditional, divine love. Come close a little bit and ask questions. How do you disconnect from the superficial, which is something, say, a teenager is bombarded with all of us, actually, but that I find that teenagers succumb to this more than others. Yes. And connect to something more substantial and deeper. How do you do that? Yes, I understand. How do you disconnect from the superficial? and reconnect with something more substantial. Like you said, like teenagers often... I have a teenager right now, and she's just between Okay, so you have a teenager and she's feeling a bit disconnected and you're concerned about her and you love her. Well, obviously your love for your daughter is awesome. That, so you contain love for your daughter. So if you, this is just my advice to you, is you focus on the love that you have for your daughter don't try to control her. If she's a teenager, obviously she's a young adult. So now it's time to, you know, reaffirm, continually reaffirm your love for her. Yeah, and I felt well messed up when I was 18. <laughs> and I became aware that there was something greater than just my little self. And when I became aware of this, I started to experience this love. But sometimes people, because living in the superficial identity will result in a brokenness, awareness in a person's consciousness, so people will ultimately become aware of the deficiency of that superficial imposed identity. That produces brokenness and then they start asking questions. Who, am, who really am I? So one thing you could do for your daughter, for example, is you could pray. I don't mean praying in this religious sense. I mean just being honest and saying, I kind of know you're there, God. I'm not quite sure how. I don't quite understand it. I know that love is a real thing. And there must be a true source to love. You love. You've got a personality. You've got a consciousness. There must be a higher consciousness which is pure and is full and complete. So when you speak in like communication, and just say, be honest, and say, I want my daughter to experience substance. Just say it. Communication is a powerful thing. Words are a powerful thing. The media and advertising understand this because they're constantly planting in our consciousness ideas through words, which ultimately influence us. But you can sculpt your life when you understand what reality is through love by saying things. I can say, I, I can walk around saying, I experience true love. I am complete. I am whole. So I'm not taking on a false identity where the, the media communicates that I'm deficient and lacking something and I need to buy their products in order to be fulfilled. I can reject that and say, I'm a complete person, I'm a full person, and I'm loved. There you go. Well, love. What age is she? How old is your daughter? Okay. Well, as a father, show her love. Really show your daughter love and acceptance. I'm sure you've been tough with her before, have you? No? Mother has, okay. But more than more than so in your own personal private moments. You speak this reality for yourself because you can't communicate something that you don't have yourself. It doesn't work. Just yeah. Well, isn't it interesting? You were you were thinking these things on the way in the car coming here, and this is what is it presented before you. So, do you think that this divine love is providing something for you to give you some guidance? 
Absolutely. That's the way it works. You attract things that you're looking at within yourself. It's, this is real. So you can also start standing and believing good things for your daughter that she will experience this divine love, even without you. You can start just thinking, think thoughts about her for her to discover her true self, to go beyond the lie. Just think it and say it, that my daughter is a whole person. My daughter has discovered reality. Just speak it out, even just privately, like in prayer. But stand in it and you'll start to think this. You won't see your daughter as being superficial because you'll start to see her as being a complete person. And what, how you see things is what you project, is what you get back, right? That's how it works. I can prove that you've summed up part of my life. It's very true. Yeah. But you don't realise it for 90% of the time. And then when you realise it, it's like the penny dropping. It's not telepathic. It's just reality. We, we are amazing beings. Our consciousness, our awareness, we project. Right? But when you discover... But the problem is we're all projecting out of the superficial identity of this current world that's been imposed on us. But when we start to project out of the, our true selves, our true being, yeah. our true being, our true inner selves, we start to project life. So by even thinking about your daughter as being a whole person, so you don't need to adopt the lie that your daughter may be believing at the moment that yeah. she is lacking. You can see your daughter in a much greater sense. She's only a teenager at the moment, so sit, widen your vision and see her in a much greater sense that she's a whole person. She has discovered her true self. Start to think that way and, and start to say that to yourself. It's like positive affirmation. And when I say positive affirmation, I don't mean trying to be positive when everything is gloomy. Just trying to counteract negative with positive. No, what I just said is true about your daughter. She is a whole person. She's not a superficial person. She isn't. She may be experiencing that temporarily. The superficial is all temporal. Now we may look at the world and say, well, it's been around a long time. But in the grand scheme of things, what we're seeing in the world over the past thousand years or few thousand years or whatever, it's just a blip in the grand scheme of things. <laughs> so as we start to see reality, we start to discover how things really work. And you start to project this. And if you start to believe that your daughter's whole, which well, she is whole, she is a complete woman, right? You'll find that you start to look at her like that. And you won't be... Ne well, obviously you're looking at her, what she's experiencing at the moment, as she's growing. But many people get into, get into a sense of disappointment with their children because they're not doing what they should be doing. And they try to, and their intention is good. I don't have anything to do with my mother because she was a dictator to me when I was a teenager. And, you know, obviously it's good intentioned trying to help our children. But it, what we believe, if you start to really believe this about your daughter, that she's a complete person, that she's full of goodness, that she is a completely loved person, not just by you, but by the divine, the, the, the source of true love, what will start happening is, because you're believing it yourself, and it starts to become established in you, when you're interacting with your daughter, you're just going to blurt out one day, oh my God, you're such an amazing girl. It's just going to blurt out of you. And, but it'll come out so authentic and so real, it will go beyond the superficial and it'll penetrate her heart. Do you understand? But because you really see it. But if you've got this idea that she's somehow not measuring up, and she may not be measuring up at the moment, but if, if that's what you're focusing on, what you're likely to blurt out is you're no good. You don't want to blurt out stuff. You def if, you, if you're focusing on her lack in what she's doing now, you're likely, and if you focus on that too much, and then someday you're going to blurt out something negative, or you're no good. You're, you know, that, that is definitely not the thing you want to say to her. You don't want to tell her she's no good. She, you don't want to tell her she's not going to make it, she's useless. You don't want to say anything like that, at all. No, you don't want to say anything like that. You want to speak life to her. But you also, so you've got to have it in yourself first and really believe that she's amazing. And when you do that, you're going to blurt out one day when you're just sitting there with her, oh, you're an amazing girl. 
And she's going to go, Dad, thank you. Do you understand? It's going to penetrate her. That's true communication. But give your, be patient. Be patient with yourself and give it a little bit of time and you will see. You'll see. So, yeah, very good. Hi. Yes. Nice to meet your name? Aki. Uh, Aki. Nice to meet you. So there'd be a source to that, wouldn't there? There'd be a much greater source to that, which would be pure divine love, which would be more perfect. Okay, that's okay. It's okay to disagree. But I know, I know for a fact that you are loved unconditionally. And even if you don't agree with that divine love, you are still loved. That's because it's unconditional. And someday you will experience that love. Someday you'll experience it. So what is this, um, where does the divine love come from? Should I say anything? Well, it's the, the divine love is the foundation and source of everything. The reason the world at the current, in its current phase has disconnected its consciousness from this and is experiencing a lack and a confusion. Well, uh, that's part of the mystery, isn't it? We somehow, we are these amazing beings who have this ability to do things that hurt ourselves and walk away, but we're still loved. But, but even if I do something really bad, I'm still loved. And somehow it must be, I really can't define it, but it must have something to do with us discovering our true selves. Well, I've had loads of supernatural spiritual experiences loads of them that are ju not just physical where I've experienced real love I experienced I know that Jesus was raised from the dead for example I experienced that same life exploding within me where I experienced resurrection life within me when that happened the, I, I didn't need to read a book I now knew that there was a man called Jesus who was raised from the dead I know it's fact but I know that I could never convince you by arguing with you yeah, you have to come into that experience yourself, your way, and you will, because you are loved. You can attack it, it's fine. You can say whatever you like. Well, I don't believe the universe is horrible. I believe that the universe is amazing and that love is the foundation of everything. That beyond the fabric of what we can see, there's a pure, unconditional love. I don't have this pessimistic view that everybody is shit and we're all going to hell. I believe that love exists, divine love, and it's unconditional, and it's more powerful than our puny minds, and we can all experience it. We can all experience our true selves and go beyond the superficial, go beyond the, the, the superficial identity that is imposed on us by the media, by religion, by our parents, and discover our true selves. And that's the real challenge, to discover the true you. You That's the real challenge days. in life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Would you say you ever have any bad days? Of course I've got bad days. I had a bad weekend. But I'm still smiling. <laughs> you, you, you wouldn't want to have been with me on Friday. It was a really, it was a tough day. But I'm still smiling. I got up and I'm okay. And I'm going to keep going. But that's character building, isn't it? I could sort of lie in a, lie in a hole miserable and crying of what happened to me. But if I stand up and believe in love and believe in goodness, all it does is it magnifies these things and I become a stronger man for it. That's reality. So you can live in a sense of reality and your true self. And in reality, you're amazing, you're full of goodness, and you're perfect in love. You don't need to worry about these false ideas that you're disconnected, you're nobody, or you need to, there's nothing in the universe and there's no meaning. That's just lies. There is meaning. I have to take your word so for that. You don't have to take my word for it. Just listen to yourself. It's all inside you. You don't need to get me to tell you, but currently, you don't need me to tell you these things, but currently you do. Because you're not listening to yourself. Go away and listen to what's going on inside you, and you will realize that you're an amazing person, and you've got a purpose in life, and life is amazing. No, it's not. Well, ask someone who's hooked on crack cocaine and has no purpose and they're in the pit, right? You do need a purpose in life. You need a purpose in life. We could sort of debate and split words all day long. We need a purpose. And ultimately it's good if you find your true purpose. In the meantime, we may have sort of little sort of sub purposes where we're kind of getting there, but we're all going to get there in the end and you're going to experience amazing divine love someday. It's going to blow your mind. 
again, it doesn't really matter. You can experience now or you can experience then. It's better you experience it now. Of course, consciousness is a reality. You're not an inanimate piece of dirt. Dirt is not conscious. You're conscious. You're an expression of the universe. You're an expression of consciousness. So consciousness is a reality. So there is no death in that sense. Your consciousness won't die. Your personality is real. You're not a sort of a plastic machine. Consciousness, everything has a source. That I don't, I couldn't really define because I am not too sure. But I know that consciousness exists, okay? It definitely exists. And everything that exists in this world has a greater source, right? So consciousness, there's a pure consciousness that exists and you're connected to it. And you can experience fullness, you can experience life, you can experience wholeness, and you can experience an amazing joy, happiness and peace. It's all there for the taking. We can all experience these things because they're our inheritance, they're, they all exist. But because of the lie of the condition that society puts on us and tells us you're this, we experience lack and fear and confusion because we're believing something that isn't true about ourselves. Did you say to some extent these feelings are related to us the biological? No. The things you feel are completely related to what's been communicated. Look. Media understands this. Advertising, they are, look, advertising will will take. You're a young man, yeah. What age are you? 23. So young man. So you're all full of hope and promise and potential. Media, well, people your age, will take things that you desire and attach them those desires to their products, and they'll plant seeds in you that if you have this thing, you'll find completeness. And they constantly communicate this and you begin to have a sense of lack, feel a sense of lack when you don't have that particular product. If you listen to the thing enough, it affects us all, it affects me. You know, if I didn't have a mobile phone, I'd feel there was something missing in my life. Right? That's because it's been communicated to me so much that I need a mobile phone. Now I'm not against mobile phones, don't get me wrong, but media uses all these things to communicate and try to stimulate our base needs and attach those base needs to their product and give us a, it ends up with a sense that we are lacking, that we don't, that we need something. When really you need to go within yourself and discover who you really are in completeness and pure love and discover the reality and not have someone else tell you who you are and what you need. Right? With each one of us, the best way, in my opinion, it could all be different for everyone, but in my opinion, the best way to do it, for me certainly, was to just get quiet and just go alone by myself and just start listening quietly to myself and try to learn to go beyond the noise of my head and all the confusion that's been pumped into my mind. And when I learned to do that, I started to experience peace. And I started to become aware of a life that's within me that is even beyond words. My point is that we are divinely loved. Divine love is a true reality and you can discover your true self beyond the superficial. You can go beyond the superficial identity that has been imposed on you by the external society and culture in which we live and you can discover the real you that is created in pure love. You are a perfectly loved person. You're an amazing person. You are loved perfectly. I know what he's saying. I didn't hear anyone else here. You are loved perfectly. You're an amazing person. This man is an amazing guy, right? That's reality. Once you go beyond the conditioned mind that has all been put on us, that tells us we lack something and we need to find this fulfillment in buying the latest product or the latest clothes or whatever. And there's nothing wrong with any of them. There's nothing wrong with all these things. Stuff, clothes, phones, nothing wrong with any of this stuff. But you'll never find out who you really are in any of it. You'll never discover your identity in stuff. It's impossible. What you will discover, where you will discover your identity is in pure divine love. Pure essence. And that's what exists in reality. Pure love is the true reality that exists everywhere. But we're blinded to it because of this captivity to the superficial. Our eyes, love is right in front of all of us, but our eyes are blinded by this sense of, I need to get this to be fulfilled in the outer world. So I need the latest this and that to find fulfillment. 
You will never find fulfillment in stuff. There's nothing wrong with stuff. I've got loads of stuff, okay? I love stuff, but my identity is not in stuff. Your identity is in love, pure divine love. You are created in love and pure goodness. That's the essence. That is the essence of you. And when you discover who you really are, you will discover true satisfaction. I remember the song by Mac Mick Jagger, I can't find no satisfaction, but I try and I try. I can't find no satisfaction. You'll never find satisfaction in stuff. Where you'll find satisfaction is discovering the true you, which was created in pure unconditional love and which exists within you right now. You never separate from you. You're always in existence. Yes. And when you discover you, you will be truly happy. You'll be full of peace and joy and love. Because that's what you already are. Right? The outer society lies to us and tells us there's something wrong with us through subtle messages. All sorts of subtle little messages. They communicate inadequacy. And that you're separate. There's something wrong with you. You need to fix this and you need to fix that. You don't need to fix anything. You're amazing. And when you discover the real you, which has always existed within you, you start to experience peace. Pardon? What religion are you selling? <laughs> I'm not selling any religion. Anyway, that's the question. Where exactly is this real you that you're talking about? Where do you think the real you is? I'm asking you. The real you is inside you. Inside my body, inside of me. Look, the real you is so close to you. It's so intrinsically close to you, you can almost miss it. Because you are really close to yourself. You can't separate from you. I'm talking to you right, the real you right now. And as I say you're amazing and you're full of love, I know I'm staring something inside you. I know I'm connecting with the real you. Because if I was telling you you're stupid and you're wrong, I wouldn't be connecting with you. Yes, but language is a real thing and it's a vehicle for communicating consciousness. Language communicates consciousness and language communicates reality. Right? But consciousness is a... I'd say you're very victim, you're a victim of what happens to your brain, regardless of how you think. Well, you're not a victim. If you, if you, for example, the way reality is set up, if you believe you're a victim, you'll be a victim. Well, generally speaking, yes. That's how reality works. If, you're a vi if you believe you're a victim, you're going to experience victimhood because that's what you project. But, because what we believe about ourselves, what we believe internally, that's what we project. Let me take an extreme example. If someone who is deeply fearful, yeah? and they've experienced deep trauma in their childhood, for example. So they've got a deep sense of fear and a deep sense of lack and abandonment. When they become an adult, when they maybe meet a lovely man and a loving husband or whatever, they start to project their childhood fears on their husband and they destroy the relationship, right? Now, they're projecting internally what they believe about themselves, that they're abandoned and they're fearful, and then they project that on their the people around them who actually love them very much and they break the relationship and then they separate and live in fear by themselves. So that is a one example of an extreme example but we all do that on some level where we project internally what we believe about ourselves. We are all basically broadcasters of internally what we are and what the world itself is like one man, one corporate being projecting and currently what we're getting is confusion and fear and disorientation as humankind projects this confusion out into the universe. But when man discovers their true self, pure unconditional love, God is pure love, unconditional divine love. When man discovers his, his true self as a whole, mankind, that's what will be projected and the whole earth will be transformed. Currently what's being projected is fear and confusion and disorientation. But that ultimately isn't reality. The real reality is you are a divine being. You're created in pure love. God created you in true goodness and you're amazing. I have to disagree with you. It's okay, you can disagree with me. It's fine, it's not a problem. You'll say something. Well, what I would say to you... You'll say something that's very, very reasonable. You'll say what you said before. That's not everything I've said is reasonable. The idea of um, how we think reflects how we think. What did I say which is unreasonable? You know, it's become, there is a point where it becomes a pointless conversation when you just, I know personality exists. 
I know you're conscious, right? And what you, if you want to discover the reality, don't allow this to become an argument within yourself. It's almost like you need to learn to kind of surrender sometimes, not to me, but to what's really real going on inside you. Don't allow it to become an intellectual argument in your own head and therefore sabotage you. But I think um, there's, some benefits, least, there's nothing wrong with analyzing stuff, nothing wrong with that, but don't allow that to become your God. There's lots of people, their God is intellectualism and their intellectual argument, that's what they bow down to. Bow down to love, divine love and goodness. That is the true essence and substance of all that exists because that's what you're created in. You're amazing. You're created in true goodness and love. Pardon? Would you say that one being is more good than one being? No. So what about, let's say we have like some horrible murder. That's all relative, but look, if society produces a horrible murderer, it's a product of society and the consciousness and fear that exists within society. But what people do isn't like a, a horrible murder isn't really a horrible murder. That's what they're doing and identifying with in their external world. They think they're that. They're so disconnected from their true selves. They've now identified with this fearful monster that they think they are and they become and they're getting their satisfaction out of horrible deeds. But that's not really them. That's not them. They need to discover who they are. We all need to discover who we are. That's the, that's the true challenge in life, to discover the real you. That is the challenge. That is the true essence of it. To discover the true you, the real you, and to go beyond just the conditioning of what we see in the external world and connect with you. The you that no one has imposed on you. The you that only you can know and believe in. Your parents have told you who you are. If you're brought up in England, England has told, have been telling you who you are, right? But you can discover who you really are and because you are you. That's the most powerful part of you. The real you is more powerful than anything else. The superficial will pass away. If it's only for a thousand years, the superficial reality exists. It's only a blip in the grand scheme of things. But the real reality of who we are is going to be unveiled to all of us eventually where we all discover pure divine love and we discover the creator and yes there's no excuse for doing evil and wrong and all that kind of stuff all these things are a product of misidentification not knowing who you are living in a sense of lack and fear and allowing that lack and fear to grow within you so someone who is abandoned as a child beaten as a child do they need to become do the same thing when they grow old and beat their own children well, some do. They get abused as children and then they become abusers because that's where they learnt their identity. They had a sense of dislocation put within them, a sense of fear put within them, a sense of lack put within them, a sense of worthlessness, and then they grew up to believe these things about themselves and then they started to project it onto their own children or the people around them. But they don't need to. They can realise Actually, what happened to me is not who I am. I may be feeling awful right now because of what was done to me, but it isn't really me. I'm going to dig deep and discover the real me. That's the true challenge. Not just for people who've experienced trauma, but for mankind, even the good people, so-called good people, they need to discover their true selves because so-called good people put their faith and trust in their own, their own kind of niceness. Being nice is not reality. Looking nice. We need to discover reality of who we are, our true identity. You were created in pure divine love and you're amazing. You're full of goodness. That's who you are right now, whether you believe it or not. That is exactly who you are. Now meditate on that thought and I bet you it'll make you feel amazing and you'll start to think I'm amazing and you'll start to act amazing because you are amazing. You'll start to feel the power flowing in your inner being because there's true power in the real you. There's real power in you. And when you connect with the real you and start to believe out of the real you that you're an amazing person, you're a brilliant person, you're a loved person, you're pure love, that's, that sense within you, you start to feel that love within yourself, you start to feel complete, you start to feel satisfied, and therefore you start to act that way because that's who you believe you are. And you start to project goodness, you start to project love, and it's authentic because it is you. 
When you're living in this sense of lack, the lack, the lackluster identity that feels it's not good enough and needs to do something to improve, that produces nothing. You're just struggling through life trying to be a bit better or oh, I'm going to go on a self-improvement program and try to be a good person. I must get this weight off, I must do this, I must do that. And it's just life just a struggle because you believe the worst about you. The media tells you you're too fat, you're too thin, you're too this, you're too that. Your hair is not right, your nose isn't right. This is all rubbish. You're amazing, this is what you got to believe. And there is a true self. Your true self is internal to you and can manifest out of you because you believe it. It's very important what you believe about yourself internally. Extremely important because that's where you connect with yourself internally. What you believe about who you really are is super important. Thank you, sister. You've written 17 books. Yeah, I'm with Amazon and eBay, and this is what I'm trying to teach. Good for you. Yeah. But give me your number, sister. You so Write your number down, yeah? Oh, we should do that one. Okay, nice meeting you. Nice to meet you all. I, I, I better stop. I've been talking for like a solid hour and a half. <laughs> I, I never thought I'd hear somebody telling the truth in high talk. <laughs> but you're the first one. Thank you. You want to say that in the microphone? Say it in the microphone. You're, you're the first person. I've ever heard in, in 30 years in Hyde Park that tells the truth straight. <laughs> That's it. Pure divine goodness and pure love. Nice yeah. to meet you. What's your name? Martin. Nice to meet you, Martin. I'm Eamon. Well done, Eamon. Thank you.